Hello my loyal companions, welcome back to the channel and to another episode of Rogue Revealed, the series where I take you through everything you need to know about Rogue Company. In today's video I want to help you and your competitive team by giving you some tips to improve your communication and your comms in game. If you do go on to enjoy the video make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel, but for now, let's get into it. When it comes to competitive play, one of the big things that's going to set your team apart from another team is how well you can communicate and balance your communications within the team. For those of you who do know, I do play competitive Rogue Company. I do play with a team called the Mario Puppeteers as part of Mario Gaming, and we do focus mainly on demolition. I've been practicing for the different demolition tournaments that are coming up. A major part of our practice in gelling well as a team is to learn and figure out our communication style. What I want to do is share a few of the tips and things that I've learned when focusing on communications that hopefully will help you and your team better yourselves in that sense too. I'm going to start by addressing the two biggest problems I see with communications and that is people not talking enough and people talking too much. Not talking enough actually just takes away your advantage of being on comms. If you're not communicating and giving call outs, why are you even squatting up and putting a headset on? There is a bare minimum that every player on your team needs to be able to do and that is give good, clear, accurate call outs. This generally involves telling your team where enemy positions are, where your own position is and what you're planning on doing. If your teammate is not able to do that, then they're really not going to fit well within the competitive scene because it's such vital information for every teammate. Not one person can focus on every single thing going on the map and that's why you need your additional teammates to be able to cover those different aspects of the game. But going on to that, there is such a thing as communicating too much. This generally revolves around two things, one being too many callouts and too many plays being made or suggested. That can be really uh, disorientating for a team, but also uh, too much unnecessary comms. That doesn't just mean things like talking about your day, talking about the weather, that sort of thing. It just means that sometimes there's too much information from one person or from a few people that drown out the important information within a team. A good example of this would be if you say you see a Ronin in mid and you say Ronin is in mid but then she moves to the left hand side of mid like, oh Ronin is left mid, she's right mid, she's left mid, she's right mid. That is unnecessary communication, she's mid, your team knows it. You speaking may take away from comms from somebody else who might have a different aspect or a different thing uh, that might be really useful for your team to know. That being said people do tend to repeat themselves in quick succession uh, when making a call for example she's low, she's low, she's low. I tend to do this um, more just out of habit, uh, but it just helps get your message across on the first instant. What you then don't want to do is repeat that call a few more times afterwards um, and distract your teammates. They're the two biggest issues I've seen, either this lack of communication or this overuse of communication, but there's another and very important role that your team dynamic needs to figure out, and that is shot calling. So shot calling is the communication that tells your team what the play is and what you're going to do. In a row company scenario with a four-man team, your team wants one or two shot callers at most. The shot callers need to make the play as you come out of the play and decide for the team very clearly what the approach is. Normally you'll have some strategies uh, sort of made up beforehand and then they'll call which one that you're planning on executing in that round. They also need to be the ones that are explaining the pace of the game and what the team is looking to do as those plays are being called out. To put that in example, let's say that the call that's being made out of the plane is to push B. Well, when you get to B, say that there's initial like few seconds of setup and then you initiate a really hard breach. It is your shot callers who will be the ones to say, are we ready? Yes, breach, breach, breach. That is the shot call, that is the important play that is being made and it helps everybody on that team know when the execution is meant to go down. If you try and have too many people make that call in game, then there's a bit of a miscommunication about who is making the call, when they make the call, and it's a lot more difficult. Having one designated or ideally kind of two designated shot callers uh, just in case there's different plays happening around the map is the best way to go forward when trying to coordinate a team in this way. When deciding who your shot callers should be, you don't necessarily have to pick just the best player, but someone who has good game sense, really clear communication, and a good understanding of the different plays and mechanics that go into your comp and strategy. Going on to my last point is that you're going to need to commit to the call that is being made. In game, in the moment, during the execution of a play is not the time to dispute the point, dispute the strategy and uh, not follow along because you think there might be something better. When a call is being made in a competitive team, it is meant to be made with full execution and uh, support from the other teammates. You can't start disputing it as it's happening because then you lose all clarity and nobody's on the same page, everybody's kind of confused about what's meant to be going on and you're not going to be able to execute it to the best of its ability. You should, as a coordinated team, spend a lot of time practicing together and learning your communication, learning your different strategies, and that's when you iron out the differences and different approaches to your gameplay, not during the match, during the tournament, when these calls are meant to be made. 
Okay then guys, that's going to take us to the end of the video. If you did enjoy or you did learn something that this was helpful for your competitive team, then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you do want to check out my communication style or the communication style of my teammates, then you can come follow me on twitch.tv slash radbargaming to see those live gameplays and tournaments. Rogue Bowl is this Saturday the 19th of September at 1pm Eastern to 4pm Eastern and we will be competing in that, trying to get the dub in those demolition squad games. All the links you need are in the description, but for now guys, I hope you have a fantastic day, and remember, be loyal, be brave, be relentless, and I'll see you in the next video.